And we're joined by Rick Weber, known to most people in Kelowna as the guy who used to anchor the evening news for so many years. That's right. uh, you want to make a switch to municipal politics. Why? Well, you know, I've been covering city council since the 1970s, starting in Powell River. And I was always intrigued by them because everything they decide has such an immediate impact on the local residents. And in Kelowna right now, it's a high pressure job. I mean, this is the fastest growing city and they're dealing with development issues and decisions that some municipalities only have to face once a year. Council here is doing it practically every week. So you need someone to come on who can really ask the tough questions. And I think I could do that based on all those years that I was a journalist. You mentioned um, public safety prior to this interview as a big yeah. issue for you. Yeah. Tell us about that. You know, I never would have said that that was a big issue for me going back all the years I've lived here, 30 odd years. You know, you and I worked on Leon Avenue for many years and I never felt like my safety was threatened. But in the past year, I've been accosted now on the street twice. And I'm not, I don't feel as safe here anymore as I used to, as much as I love Kelowna and there's nowhere else I'd rather live. This is an issue. One man has been charged uh, as a result of one of these incidents. and. I, I fully endorse city council's attempt to get more police officers in it. And it's tough to recruit them. And a lot of them don't want to live here now anymore because it's so expensive. So we've got to solve that problem. And on top of that though, city council can only do so much to deal with crime and drug abuse. And you really have to sit down and negotiate hard with other level of government, the province and the feds. The, the city council can't do it all, but try and get a handle on these issues. Right, so um, first of all, back up, accosted. Someone came at you with a knife? With a knife, yeah, and uh, at home where I live outside my, my condo building. And as I say, he's been charged and I don't wanna say anything that would affect it. But you know, you look at the stats, 25% of Kelowna residents in a recent survey the city had conducted, 25% said that they had been the victim of crime in the past year. I'm not the only guy. I mean, 25% is crazy. And the stats show that about one tenth of Kelowna residents have officially filed complaints, criminal complaints. So uh, the other um, issue that you know never goes away is how best to manage uh, homelessness. Do you mm -hmm. think that this council has been on the right track, partnering with other levels of government, creating housing? Well, the housing that they've created is invaluable, but you know, it's it's not going to be the solution. You know, back in the day when I worked on Leon Avenue, all the businesses were asking for what are you gonna do about the crime on our street? A lot of women, a lot of staff were afraid to go out to their cars by themselves without getting uh, somebody to go with them. You know, it's, it was kind of dangerous. And the city always said, well, our big thing is to get everybody housed, all the homeless people housed, mm -hmm. and that'll be fine. Well, they practically did. Mm -hmm. They've set up a lot of housing for as many people as there were homeless back then. But new homeless people keep coming to Kelowna, just like everybody else. So you'll never be able to catch up that way. Uh, I mean, you have to keep trying to provide housing. But it's going to, again, take a concentrated effort with other municipal, other government levels, you know. Right. So, you know, people talk about dealing with the core issues behind the homelessness. Yes. Yeah. And that's and that boy, that's tricky. You know, when you start talking about, can, you know, there's a lot of articles lately. Can you involuntarily treat people? And, you know, that's that's a truck. Tons of high rises going up. How do you feel about how the whole look of Kelowna is changing? It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. You know, I was way more enthusiastic when we reported all these new high rises going up. Oh, Kelowna's going to look like a city. Until I realized I probably couldn't afford to live in any of the condos. You know, I mean, $800,000 for 860 square feet. I don't know. That may seem like a great deal from Vancouver, but not for me. But we need to build housing. And if you don't build a 20-story building, say you build five, you're not building enough housing for the demand. And then prices go up. So I'm not, I'm not gonna call on the idea of less housing being developed, you know, right. but you're, where the towers go, how are they affecting the downtown, the infrastructure? What, it, what the effect on the environment? You can't just keep building them willy nilly. <laughs> and I've been watching council. I don't, they are being approved willy nilly. I think you gotta come up with a plan saying how many towers are too close to each other? How many can the city support? Right. Those are the kind of questions I'd like to ask. And I, I like the idea that I, I can bring with me interview skills that would be very direct, both for the developers and for the staff. Right. All right. Well, appreciate you doing this interview. I know you have to go. You have 30 more interviews to do. <laughs> you better Probably. get busy. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. And, and thank you for watching Kelowna Now.